Okay, I'm going to title my sharing. It is time. It is time. If you study Isaiah chapter 60, 61, and 62, they form a unit. They have to be studied together. They have to be read together. That deals with the future of God's people. It deals with our, our, our church. You must read Isaiah 60, 62 to get the whole picture, as I say just now. I've been reading Isaiah, okay, Isaiah 66 chapter, I've been reading and I'm coming to the end. But I spent quite a lot of time, I spent quite a lot of time on 60 to 62 because it applies to me personally, it speaks to me personally and it also speaks to this church as a whole. It has something for this church as a whole. I should say that Isaiah 60 to 62 impressed me greatly, impressed me greatly, and I felt God, Yahweh was telling me something that is very, very important to see the promises of God coming to pass in each and every one of our life. I felt that God was telling me that it is time. The time has come. <clears throat> Yahweh wakes God's people up <clears throat> to receive strangers <clears throat> who have come to worship Him in their temples, in their churches. Those foreign delegates that is mentioned, okay, brings with them great riches to offer sacrifices as God. These people that come to God, they bring their riches to offer sacrifices to God. God, God no longer shows anger, but compassion to His people. Righteousness and peace will replace the violence and the destruction in God's people's life and also the people of this world's life that come to know God. God anoint His people to preach the good news to the poor, to bind up the brokenhearted. That is why Mike and Juvi should understand that very truth. God anoint His people to preach good news to the poor, to bind up the broken heart, to proclaim freedom for the captives, and to proclaim that God's day of vengeance has come. <clears throat> Ruined cities. You know, you look at Ilolo City. Ilolo City was, you know, there was, uh, there was a guy, I say, uh, maybe we can buy this lamb. He said, why should we buy this lamb? It is a swamp. He said that to me. But today it has become SM. It has become SM. Ruined cities, devastated lands will be restored. God's people will become priests for the world and experience everlasting joy. So God's people sing God's praise. <clears throat> what can we learn from this portion of Scripture, especially by Isaiah chapter 60, <clears throat> 61 and 62? I cannot read everything, but I'm going to just read the important points. Number one, the declaration to shine. That is in chapter 60, verse 1 and 2. The first two verses of chapter 60, verse 1 and 2, it says, Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Here God is imploring us to be what we are called to be and for the world. We are to shine. I am to shine. Like is a metaphor for God's presence and spiritual holiness. Light is always a metaphor for God's presence and spiritual holiness. I told you that the sun was created on the fourth day, but God said, let there be light on the first day. That is God's light. That is not the sun's light. Light is always a metaphor for God's presence and spiritual holiness. God's presence and spiritual holiness, it says here, is upon me and I am to shine. I am to shine. God's glory is used in the context of light and agricultural abundance. Brightness, brightness, light is an aspect of God's glory. God's glory is always one of brightness. There are, many, there are people that see the glory of God. They cannot see. They are, they, they are blinded like, like Paul the Apostle that was on the road to uh, uh, Damascus. He was shot. He, his, his eyes was blinded because of the glory of God's light. Brightness is an aspect of God's glory. It's not just the Shekinah glory. It's not just the cloud of glory that rests upon the ark. It was not just the cloud of glory that followed the children of Israel in the wilderness. But it is actually the glory of the Lord in person Himself. You know what I'm trying to tell you? The Living Bible puts it this way. For the glory of the Lord is streaming from you. The glory of the Lord is streaming from you. Arise, shine. The glory of the Lord is streaming from you. Flowing out through you, the person of the Godhood 
is upon me, flowing out to each and every one of you. God's glory as a person is upon me. You say, how is it possible? Isaiah 62, 1 gives the answer. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to preach good news unto those who are cast now, to bind up the wounds of the brokenhearted, proclaim, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those they are bound. Here it describes the means of God's blessing. Okay, the means of God's blessing and it mentioned three points. There are three truths here. First, the Spirit of the Lord will come upon me. I will be anointed. That's what Mike and Juvie must understand. You are not going there as a person. Whenever you do something for the ministry, whatever department you are in, you need the glory, the anointing of the Lord upon you. The Spirit of the Lord will come upon you. You will be anointed. You know what's anointing? Anointing symbolizing, symbolizes the conferring of holiness, authority, set apart, scheduled for a specific role. That's the meaning of the glory of God's anointing. Set apart, conferring of holiness, authority, scheduled for a specific role. The Hebrew word for Messiah is related to the verb anointing. He has sent me to preach a good news. Secondly, secondly, the gift of the learned or the learned. The gift of the learned. How is this possible? Because you have the gift of the learned. This is the second truth which God told me in Isaiah chapter 50, verse 4 to 5. I read to you. The Lord has given me the tongue of the learned. Learned. That I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. He wakened me morning by morning. He wakened my, eye, my ears to hear as a learned. The Lord has opened my eyes, opened my ears, that I was at, and I was not rebellious, neither turned away back. I mean, we saw the drama. There is a road map. Where is the road map? The Word of God. It speaks about the importance of learning. God taught me how to speak a word to him that is weary. Morning by morning, I hear as a learned. This speaks of the importance of a relationship, the importance of devotion. In my morning and morning devotion, I'm given his words of wisdom. You see, you are given the words of wisdom to know what to say to these weary ones. He wakened me and opened my understanding to his will. I am a disciple of Jesus Christ and I credit Jesus for giving me knowledgeable speech. I shared in a congregational prayer a few weeks ago that I was reminded of the spiritual download that Pastor James uh, Singh gave it to me. He was saying that he saw, I was standing there, he saw a scroll, uh, like that, a scroll, in front of me, facing me. In the scroll was written the Word of God. Written the Word of God with actually the instruction point by point. When I have my devotion, I will receive this instruction and I'm to follow this instruction in life, in handling, in going about what to do. I will be gifted to listen. I will be gifted to encourage. I will be listening to the hurting and weary ones. I will not be disobedient because the Word of God will warn me about the danger. I will become a disciple. The word disciple, okay, is a rare word. It is... Uh, it is translated as the word taught, taught. So when you have no morning by morning devotion as a disciple, you will be taught. You will not be taught by man, but you will be taught by God. You will be taught by Yahweh. And you, as a result, you will be able to perform a few tasks. You will be able to sustain the weary one. You will be able to speak a word in season to him that is weary. You will be able to strengthen the weary. You better give a word of comfort to the weary. You better speak timely word, timely word, just at the right time. Timely word to the weary. You are able to console the weary. You notice the word is weary. The word weary was mentioned so many times. Who are the weary? Weary is defined as a physically and a mentally exhausted people. There are many people, even in the church, they are physically and mentally exhausted by hard work, by exertion, by strength, by strain. They are fatigued. 
They are tired by life. They are also those who grow impatient. They are the people, the weary people are the people that are impatient. They are dissatisfied with something, something that they have been longing for, they have been trying to achieve. It has not come forth, so they are dissatisfied and they are impatient. They have weary eyes and they have weary brains. You can minister to these weary ones. Third, Yahweh also gives discernment. Isaiah 28, 6 says, He will give discernment to the ones who make judicial decisions and strength to those who defend the city from their attackers. I, Yahweh gives discernment. In lives, you need discernment to protect your family, to protect yourself from danger, okay? to, to, to protect you from going out of the way. You know, Jen was uh, talking to us. We have a chat group. And she was asking me, why some Christians, they are so nice? They are so good. No, no, the people, there's some people, they are very nice people, very good people. Yet they cannot tell who is a bad person and who is a good person. They cannot tell. And they align themselves and they get themselves into trouble and they foolishly align with themselves with these bad people. Well, Yahweh can give this sermon. And one of the gifts of a Christian is to ask for the gift of this sermon. He gives this sermon to the one who makes the judicial, judicial decision. You are making very important decision. A person who has this sermon has a spirit of judgment. That means he, he can judge what is right, what is wrong. How to? Only a person that is anointed has a spirit of judgment. Many a times, we have to make judicial decisions on important issues. And we can make right judgment because Yahweh wants what is just and faithful, so we need to have the gift of discernment to make the right decision. As a Christian, okay, you have to drive out enemies from your gates. You have to prevent from your house, from your family, even the church. You have to prevent attacks on our family, from our house, our church. So we cannot be companion with unjust people. So how? Have discernment. Have discernment. And discernment comes about by morning and morning devotion. You see, okay, discernment is a gift. Discernment is a gift. Some people, you have the gift of discernment. Maybe because, I don't know, some people just got a gift. Some people just don't have the gift. But discernment, discernment can be acquired by morning, by morning devotion. I'm telling you. Discernment can be acquired by morning, by morning devotion from Yahweh. Number two, the conditions of the present world. Isaiah 62 says, For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee and His glory shall be seen upon thee. Darkness shall cover the earth. This is not just physical darkness, but spiritual darkness caused by sins. It is not just darkness. The Bible here says, the, 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 you know, Isaiah is very poetic. He, it's not just darkness, but gross darkness. Gross darkness upon the peoples of this earth. The darkness of despair shall cover the earth. A key to understanding this truth is to remember that Isaiah did not separate the material world, the material world from the spiritual world. We exist in a moral, spiritual darkness that is prevailing everywhere. The Living Bible paraphrases it as this. Darkness as black as night. Darkness as black as night shall cover all the peoples of the earth. What is this darkness? And if you do not agree with me, you look at the world today. Darkness as black as night shall cover all the peoples of the earth. Oh, but this is darkness. It is darkness of moral guilt. It is darkness of spiritual, religious error. Ah, let me look at Kibaloi. Ah, Aroyo, crown him king. He literally put a crown upon his head. Religious error. Darkness of spiritual ignorance. There's such a connection between ignorance and darkness. Another word for ignorance is blindness. Blindness. The people are just blind. As to spiritual things, the people of the earth are blind in ignorance and in the dark. And this, dark, this darkness is very deep, very profound and very awful. Actually, if translated properly, this verse is talking about the thickest darkness. The thickest darkness has come upon the earth. 
You see, God said, you must shine right now because the thickest darkness has come upon the earth. And God said, I have to give you the light because of the thickest darkness has come upon the earth. There's such an evil sensuality. People flaunt their sins today. They flaunt their sins today. Never seen in history. Just week, this week alone, this week alone, okay? Let's talk about this week alone. I just read in Manchester, an Indonesian student, a male student, who was engaged in, um, in an engaged member of society. That means he, 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 he was involved in caring works for the society. He was also studying as a PhD. These students, a 30, at Leeds University, he's just a 36 years old student. But behind closed door, behind closed door, he prayed on, prayed, prayed, P R E Y, on more than 190 men. 190 men in Manchester drugging them before sexually abusing them while filming the attack. For over two and a half years, this Indonesian guy studying in England remain unknown to the police until one of the victims woke up, woke up during the assault and fought him off. Here I'm not talking about a man raping a woman. Here I'm not talking about a man raping, I'm talking about a man raping a man and not, not one man, 190 men. Why? Something is wrong. Something is demonic. There is a gross darkness in this world. Then in, in Japan, in Japan, we are witnessing again this week. I'm just reading to you this week's article. The trial of a Japanese man who stabbed to death 19 disabled people at a care home. 19 disabled people at a care home, he went in and he stabbed to death 19 of them. This darkness overspread earth through the prevalence of popery, doctrines and system of the government. I just saw the, the doctrines of the government, the system of the government can be the cause of the spreading of this darkness. This darkness overspread the earth through infidelity. You know, actors and actresses, they must be, inf they must be involved in um, extra marital affair. Every one of them must be. And we love the shows. And immorality. Darkness can be defined as ignorance, blindness, all kinds of errors and vices. The way the King James Version describes this, virus, uh, this darkness is so poetic. It's, it's designed to turn attention to the fact that all the world will be enveloped. The world will be enveloped. Listen carefully. Actually, the world is already enveloped in deep spiritual night. And how to overcome this darkness? But in the midst of all this, the glory of God shall be coming upon you. 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 God will allow the darkness which covers the whole, all humans to remain. But His light and revelation and salvation will rise upon you. The glory of God will stream through you. We need to connect with God. It is time. We need to connect with God. It is time. Number two. Sorry, number three. The promise of, to God's people. 63 to 4 says, And the Gentiles shall come to thy light. You see, the Gentiles shall come to the light and the kings to the brightness of thy birth. Lift up thy eyes round about thee and see. They all gather themselves together. They come to thee. They come to you. Thy son shall come from afar and thy daughter shall be nursed at thy side. Gentiles shall come to thy light. They shall seek out the light. They need the light. They want the light. And they will seek out the light. And when they see the light in you, they will come to the light. Kings even will come to the brightness of thy light. They, they will bring, they come with gifts, they will come with gifts and praise. They will gather together and they will come to your light. You know, Adam Clark, the, comment, the Bible commentator said that this is the subject of the great increase and the flourishing state of the church of God. 
by the conversion and ascension of the heathen nations to it. There's a difference between paganism and hedonism. Paganism is idol worship. Hedonism thinks that there is no God and when, uh, they do, do not know that there's a God and they do not know where God is. These hidden people that do not know where there's, whether there's a God or not and they do not know God, they shall come to know Him through who? You. They will come to know God through you. There are many people that say, I don't know there's a God. I don't know whether there's such a thing as a God. They will come to you. The Gentiles shall come to you. We are here given a role. It is time. It is time to help the cast down. Who are these Gentiles? They are the cast down. We are to bring good news to the suffering and the afflicted. We are to bring a favorable announcement. Yahweh will send a herald of good news message will be one of hope and forgiveness to the outcasts, to the ostracized, to the socially oppressed. There are many people that are socially oppressed. They are outcast. They are ostracized. We are going to bring good news. We are going to bring good news to them. We are going to bind up the wounded heart. The hearts, they are wounded. We are going to bind up the broken heart. We are going to proclaim liberty. They are, they are, they are bound. They are in bondage. We, say, declare, we will declare that we are free in the name of Jesus Christ. We are to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. It is time. It is time. It is the year of the Lord's favour. To proclaim the year of the Lord's favour is to announce that the favour of God has come. It is significant to notice that the favourable year is also the day of vengeance. They are together at the same time. The time of God's favour also refers to the year when slaves are freed. The slaves are freed. It is time. Lands are returned. Lands are returned to this rightful owner. It's supposed to occur on the 50th year of the Jubilee. It's a year of release from all debts. The debts of sin. A release from all debts. And return to all the lands, of all the lands, to the original owner every 50 years. Isaiah 65 says, Then thou shalt see, and thou shalt shine. And the heart shall marvel. You will, be, you will be excited. You will be surprised. God loves to surprise us. Your heart shall marvel and be enlarged because the abundance of the sea shall be converted to thee and the strength of the Gentiles shall have come to thee. When all this takes place, you will be ready and you will be thrilled with joy. You shall marvel and be enlarged. It means the abundance of the people will be converted to thee. The wealth of the sea foreign people, the wealth of nations shall come to thee. The strength of the Gentiles shall come to thee. The Bible here says in uh, 60 verse 9, For the owls shall wait for thee, the ships of Tashit from the first, to bring thy sons from above, and their silver and their gold with them, with the names of the Lord thy God, and to the Holy One of Israel, who have glory who has glorified thee. You know the owls, the owls refers to the coastland. The owls refers, to, it's a metaphor for the Gentiles' nations. That's why we have to go to the outermost part of the nation. We are not just going to go to Cambodia. That's why we want to strengthen Cambodia as strong as possible so they will be strong. Then maybe they can partner with us and we will move to Laos. Sixty ten. And the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls, and their king shall serve thee, for in my wrath I smoke thee. Maybe <clears throat> you have done something, and in God's wrath, God has smoked thee. God has smoked thee. Maybe you have not, you have not given God your time. Maybe you have doubted God. Maybe because of so many things, you have doubted God. God said, I have smoked thee. But God said, in my favor. I shall have mercy upon you now. Now is the time. It is time. Maybe many of you people, you felt your lives have been affliction. Well, Yahweh says His judgment on you is parental. Okay, you say, you have affliction? Yahweh say, my judgment on you is parental in nature. Man to cause you to return to me. Two major actions of Yahweh is described here. Wrath, but grace. Wrath and grace. And therefore thy gates shall be opened continually. They shall not be shut day or night. The strength of the Gentiles shall be brought unto thee and they are gu- the kings guided. The gate of the church will be opened continually because you will be secure, you will be available, you will be certain concerning the church. The Gentiles shall be brought unto us and prominent people, leaders, if the king represented the king, shall be guided by us, shall be guided by us. 
Then he says this, For the people of the kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish and be utterly wasted. Hey, listen to this. The people that don't want to serve your God, the people that don't want to serve our God. No, God has shown Pastor Lily and I many times that people that do not want to serve our God or serve the church or serve us will perish. No, so many people that don't want to serve Pastor Lily, they, 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 they say they want to serve other churches. God said, they shall, those that serve, don't want to serve you shall perish and utterly wasted, utterly wasted. Please, I'm sharing from the Word of God. So if you have quarrel, you have quarrel with the Word of God. You have quarrel with the Word of God. You know, you know how you counteract uh, untruth by the Word of God? The Word of God says it. It says, The sons also of those that afflicted thee shall come humbled unto thee. And at thy steps of thy feet, all those that despise thee shall bow themselves down and they shall call thee the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. People that afflicted thee are people that attack your business, attack you. They'll come humble before you. They'll come at the, at the footstep of your feet. Those that despise you shall bow down. God does this not because you are great. He does this because He said, I am Yahweh. I'm Savior, I'm Redeemer of your life. I'm the Mighty One. And He says this, 6021, And thy people shall be all righteous, and they shall inherit the land forever. They shall inherit the land forever. They shall be shoots of many planting. Of, they shall be shoots of my planting. That means new, new growth. New growth will come out. There will be shoots of new planting, the works of my hand, that I may be glorified. You know, in Singapore, the government will always say this. I cannot share this in Singapore. Most of the homes owned by citizens are 99 years lease. The reason the government gives is that you have to think of the next generation. Think of the next generation. Well, if I know my Bible properly, okay, if I know my, the Word of God properly, for the land of Israel, 35,000 years has passed. It belongs to the people of God, Israel, eternally. Eternally. In the 1,000 millennium, the land of Israel will still belong to Israel. At the, year, at, the, at the year of the Jubilee, all land have to be... You see, during the year of the Jubilee, all land has to be returned to the individual Israelites. Individual is like the land have to be returned to them. It didn't say government say, hey, you are the thing of next generation. No, the Bible didn't say that. All lands has to be returned to individual Israels. Those who sow and pawn their land, the land will be returned to them. We bought this land. And I believe that if we serve God properly, the land will be part of God's will be part of the land of God's people forever. We shall inherit the land forever. When we consider here the context of Isaiah's prophecy, I mean, this was even before they were exiled. That was 2,500 years ago. To, to these disposed people of God, Yahweh pointed to them a day when they should inherit the land forever. And in 1948, you know, whatever God say, you, you can say anything you like. Whatever God say, He has to come to pass. In 1948, the land was returned to Israel. And Israel became a nation and step by step, they began to take back all the land that was promised to them by God. Why? Because they are so good? No! Because Yahweh say it will be. It will be. Therefore, it will be the work of God's hands that the land will be returned to Israel and Yahweh will be glorified. And I say to those Middle East nations, the Palestinian. They claim that the land belongs to them. I want to tell you, their quarrel is not with Israel. Their quarrel is with God. Their quarrel is with God. The Bible says, The small one shall be as a thousand, the younger shall be as a station, as a nation. I, the Lord, will hasten it in its time. Yahweh will hasten it in its time. Hurry it along and expedite it. It is time. It is time. We'll be called priests of the Lord. We'll be named priests of God. We'll be called ministers of our God. We shall eat the riches of the Gentiles. With their glory, you shall be lifted up. And here the Bible says, maybe you have shames. You have shame, double shames. Instead of your double shame, your dishonor, 
They shall praise you in your inheritance. Therefore, in your land, you shall possess double. You shall have everlasting joy. Instead of double shame, maybe your life is a shame. Instead of, maybe your life is a double shame. Instead of double shame and your dishonor, they will praise you in your inheritance. Therefore, in your land, you shall possess double portion of prosperity. You shall have everlasting joy. Why? Because God says in 61.8, For I, the Lord, love what is right. I hate robbery for burnt offering. I will confirm your work in, in truth. I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Yahweh loves what is right. Yahweh hates robbery. You will confirm thy work in truth. Yahweh will make an everlasting covenant with them. And he said this, And their seed shall be known among the Gentiles, and their offsprings among the people. All that saw them and shall acknowledge them, and they shall be a seed. They are the seed which the Lord has blessed. My physical descendant, my children, my spiritual descendant, this church, all of you, shall be known and honoured. Known and honoured among people. A people, the others will realise you are a people, they are blessed. You are a people, they are blessed. I didn't say that. The Word of God said that. So if you serve God, your children, I look at mine. The parents serve God. I know they spend a lot, but were they in debt after the wedding? I heard that there are many people, Joy was just telling me that many, many Singaporeans, after they got married, they took many years to settle their debt. Everything is settled. Everything is settled. They will be blessed. They will be blessed. The, their, their path, their path looks a difficult light. I like the drama. Obstacle, obstacle, obstacle. But you were clear, you were clear, you were clear. Your spiritual descendants, your children, listen to me, parents. You listen to me. You always want good health. You always want a uh, blessing upon your children. You always want this, am I correct? God said this. You serve God. You're my physical descendant, my children, my spiritual descendants. All of you will be known and honoured and people will realise that you are people that God has blessed. You are a people that God has blessed. Number four. This is my most important message, uh, point, the challenge. For Zion's sake, I will not hold my peace. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until her righteousness go forth as brightness and the saving health as lit as a flaming torch. I title my message, It is time. It is now, not tomorrow. What God has said in all of Isaiah 60, 61, it is time, not tomorrow. The time has come. In our present condition, maybe in your present situation, you felt that something is missing. You felt that something is missing. Yes, but something is missing. I do not know about you, but I've been feeling that something is missing. Hope and dreams, hope and dreams has not been brought to reality. Even for some in the church, despair and frustration is prevailing upon you. So how do you res respond and what is the challenge? For Zion's sake, I will not hold my peace. I will not keep silent. I will not be quiet. I is a reference to you, the new servant, the new thing. Again, this title has a reference to us becoming somebody different, new. I'm implored. I am implored not to rest until righteousness go forth as brightness. Again, brightness is connected with the presence of God. Brightness is connected with the light. My saving health is literally as a flaming torch. We are meant to be the light to the darkness of paganism and fertility. But we are, many, many of us, we are captured by the darkness. Our life is under the darkness. You know, we, we see a lot of presentation by the youth church recently. Last time we always say, oh God, their face, there's darkness in their face. They don't look born again. But nowadays when the young people come and perform, there is a glow. They look born again. They look born again. We, we, some of us, we, 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 we are captured by the darkness. We are captured by the darkness. Our, our lives, many a time, is one of defeat. 
one of defeat, one of mediocrity, second class, one of deadness. Everything is deadness all around. But here Yahweh is saying that you must not rest. You must not rest even in this situation. You must not rest until the righteousness and the salvation shall prevail. Righteousness and salvation speak of the, the position and the lifestyle of a person until your position and your lifestyle has become different. Uh, different. Different. You must not rest until your position in life and your lifestyle in life is different. Physical deliverance from the enemies. Salvation talks about not just physical deliverance. Salvation talks about spiritual forgiveness. You must not rest until you experience spiritual forgiveness. Right standing before God. Because if I love the church and my heart yearns for her, I will not cease to pray for her nor cry out to God on her behalf until she shine forth in her righteousness. Now is the time. It is time. It is time. We have been talking so long. I think it is time. It is time. Isaiah prophesies the time when Jerusalem was still a functioning city but spiritually corrupt. We are a functioning place. But something is missing. Isn't that the condition of the church today and God's people are more often than not in this state? I will not rest. No, I will not rest. It's a reference to an individual until the prophecy and the promises is fulfilled. Yet at the same time, I will not rest. This prophecy has reference to Yahweh Himself. That means Yahweh will not rest. You will not rest. Yahweh said, I will not rest, but you will not rest until this fulfillment, this thing has been fulfilled, this prophecy has been fulfilled, these promises has been fulfilled. It, it's, you know, it's like a dual people. Yahweh said, you, go in, you don't rest until whatever I say in the Word of God is fulfilled. Then God said, I will not rest until I see the fulfillment of the promises I have for my people. As God is concerned with the area of Israel as an actual material place, He also stands in a more general sense as a, represent, as a representation of our God's people, including the church. You know, I, when I was reading this, to, be tell, to tell you frankly, for one week I've been focusing on 60, 61, 62. I, do you know I was reminded of Jacob? Jacob is called the supplanter, a cheater. That means not so nice in character. And yet he said, God, I will not let you bless. I will not let you go until you bless, until you bless me. And the right word for Jacob is he rested with God. That's the meaning of rest. He rested with God. I will not rest. Then I'm reminded of Daniel. You no, know, Daniel, Daniel was reading his Bible. You know, Daniel read Ezekiel. He read Isaiah. He read all, he read Jeremiah. He read this tree. And he, he studied and he said, hey, the time is now. The time is now. And at the 70th week, the Bible said, Daniel read and he realized that the time is now. So you know what he did? So he said, so I give my attention to the Lord God to seek Him in prayer and supplication with fasting, sackcloth and ashes. It literally means that he turned his face to God. I see the Lord. He turns his face to the Lord. A personal intimacy of prayer face the temple as if God's presence remained there. No, I will never forget. I, I feel that God was, is talking to me about something. In September 2018, you know, Pastor James encouraged us. So I said, okay, I'm going to try the fasting of Pastor James. So after one month fast, I said, wow, I'm not bad, man. Four to eight only. I eat four to eight. So as I walked into the church on that Sunday and Pastor Lily was teaching in the SCG, God said, as I walk in, God said, you are not allowed to stop fasting. He just said that to me. You are not allowed to. Why did God say that? Because there's something that God wants to do. You are not allowed to stop fasting. I was taken aback, but I obeyed God. Now I felt that God has something in store for me personally and also for this church. And as I come to Isaiah 62, we've just entered a new year and we are launching the fasting. I felt that God wants me not to rest like Jacob. And even like Daniel, you studied the time, now is the time, it is time. You knew that the time of God's favour, you, you, we talk so much about God's blessings, so much of God's promises, so much of God's fulfilment of His prophecy. God said, now is time. Now is time. I must not rest until I see the fulfilment of the promise of Isaiah 60 and 61. As I told you, I was reading Isaiah 60, 61. I, my heart was stirred. My heart was really stirred. I laid my hand on the iPhone. 
with the chapters appearing on the screen. We are starting the fasting month. Let this fasting go forth by saying, God, you say a lot of things in the Bible. What is said in the Bible and what I'm experiencing in life, they don't connect. It's not a reality of what you say in the Bible. So he said, God, I, as I fast, I want to see the fulfillment of the promises He has spoken again and again to me in the Bible. I do not explain to you clearly, but I felt that the time has come. And we, this is a year of the new thing. I have to press in, not resting, until you see the fulfillment of God upon you individually, individually. I'm not asking you to just, uh, no, I'm just asking you to be like Daniel, patiently just pray and work and fast. Just don't give up. Just think of God. Think of the way every day you have to wait for the thing of the promises of God. Every day you have to make the prayer of God. Say, God, this is what you say. This is what you agree. You know there's gross darkness everywhere. Let your light come. 62, 6, 7 say this. 62, 6, 7 say this. O Jerusalem, I set intercessor on your walls who shall cry to God all day and night for the fulfillment of his promises. Take no rest, all you who pray, and give God no rest until you establish Jerusalem and make her a respected and admired throughout the earth. You see, so clear. There are, there are three rich thought here, three rich thought here. The Lord Himself will not rest regarding you, Zion. He does not want His petition to keep, petitioner to keep silence in their prayer to Him. See, He doesn't want you to keep silent in your petition to Him. He does not want His people to leave Him alone concerning Israel's, del concerning your deliverance. There are three truths here, three truths here. I'm reading verse by verse, okay? This refers to theological truth that God has limited, God has limited Himself to the prayer of His children. Your answer, your promises is dependent upon your prayer to God. Overcoming is not overcoming this reluctant, apath apathetic deity. No, but it's the intercessory ministry of the people of God claiming the promises of God for their life. The word appointed until the time. Appointed means remind. It is time. It's appointed time. It means to remind, to remind. These words are comes together. We have to remind. Ah, you remind. Not rest until God's appointed blessing has come. A person that will not rest is a watchman. He's a prayer warrior who constantly pray, give Yahweh no rest until God's people and his land are restored. You know, Charles Spurgeon gave a very good illustration about give him no rest. He gave the illustration of a beggar. You know, Charles Spurgeon lived in 1860. He was living in London. He said this, whenever you see me, he talked to the beggar, whenever you see me crossing, going across the street, Ask me for a penny. If I do not go, if I do not give you one, run after me. Sir, sir, if I do not want to give you one, run after me. And call after me all the way. Sir, 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 all the way down the streets. All the way down the streets. If that does not succeed, lay hold of me. Stop me. Lay hold of me. Do not let me go until I help you, until I give you the penny. Back without ceasing. Back without ceasing. Did anyone, did any one of you ever invite, a, do you ever invite a beggar to beg you like that? No, have you said, hey beggar, please follow me, okay, beg me, beg me. Maybe until one kilometre, then I give you the one penny. Do you ever ask this beggar to beg from you? No. But God say, I ask you. God say, I ask you. I ask you, I ask you, I ask you, I ask you to beg me. This is the, this is the expression, give him no rest. Give him no rest. You say, Pastor, are you sure? Let's go to the New Testament. You see, the New Testament is very interesting. The Old Testament, Old Testament, Old Testament are stories. New Testament are in words. But the words are always examples of the stories of the Old Testament. What did the New Testament say? Friends, lend me three loaves. From within the house, an irritated, irritated voice said, Go away! But the neighbour won't go away. This guy is meddling persistent. 
his horse fly annoyance finally wears down the sleeper who gets up and says, yeah, the bread, the bread, give you, the bread, give you. It's a funny story. Jesus tells on the road, but it's also a painful story because it flies in the face of our commercial, our common human experience. You know the common human experience? Yeah, some of our prayers are answered. Let's be honest. God is taking care of us. Some in wonderful ways. Sometimes God answers in wonderful ways. Let's, let's not be uh, dishonest. Let's be honest. But sometimes we ask, we seek, we knock for certain things to no avail. The sick marriage we pray for dissolve in divorce. The sick person we pray for does not get well. What Jesus says about prayer seems to contradict our own experience. I will concede that there does come a time when God makes it clear that our prayer request will not, cannot be fulfilled. But until God makes it clear, until God makes it clear that I will not fulfill it, you will keep on praying, you will keep on asking, you keep on seeking, you keep on knocking. You will put God in remembrance. What happened? You will no longer be termed forsaken. Do we have the verse? You will no longer be. Then after that, you will no longer be termed forsaken. Neither shall thy land any more be termed desolate, but thou shalt be called Hepzibah. My delight is in her. And thy land, Buela, are married to her. For, will the, for the will of the Lord shall be in thee, and thy land shall be married. This is an imagery, an imagery of a wedding celebration. This is so interesting. Before I prepare this, this is the imagery of a wedding ceremony. I want you to think of the Friday's wedding ceremony. We witnessed last Friday a beautiful wedding celebration. The message Bible says, your land will be like a wedding celebration. Your land will be like a wedding celebration. Literally a wedding celebration last Friday. As Mike delights in Juvie, even though he cannot give the seven points why he liked her properly. We will, we, we will be called delight because the groom delight might delight in juvie. You understand what I'm saying? You will no longer be termed forsaken until a young man takes delight in a young woman. A young man is excited to be along with a young woman. That's what God is trying to say. God is saying that I'm going to consume. That's why in, in the, in the, when we are raptured, the, the first thing that will happen is the wedding, the marriage of the Lamb, the wedding celebration, the wedding celebration. That's what God is trying to say. As my delight and juvie, we will be called delights by our groom, Yahweh. And our land will be Buela. We will be married to Yahweh. I shall no longer be termed forsaken. The land will no longer be termed desolate. Some of you, the word desolation means you are an outcast. Do you feel that your life, your title of life is like an outcast? This is how you felt for yourself. Forsaken by God. Wonder whether God will ever love you again. Yahweh say, no. You come to me. You not rest. You take care of me. Until you are called Hepzibah. I delight in you. And your land will be called Belua. You are married to me. If the idea is not our inheritance in God, but His inheritance in us. That is how you know, many of us, we do not understand how precious we are to God. We are precious to God. Isaiah 62, 6 to 7 say, I have set watchmen upon their wall to Jerusalem, shall not hold their peace day or night, nor make ye they make mention of the Lord, that nor kept, keep silent and give him no rest until he establish, until he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. He told me that in 2018. You know, it's very interesting. In September 20, 2019, See, okay, 60, 61, 62 is about Israel. It's about Israel. But I just want to tell you, it's not just about Israel. It's about the church. It's about individual people, the body of Christ, about each and every one of us individually. But Prime Minister Netanyahu, in September 20, 2019, he made this speech. He made this speech. Okay, he made this speech. Please remember, Israel became a nation in 1948. This is just 70 years ago. 70 years ago, okay? He said this, he said this. Only 70 years ago, the Jews were taken to slaughter like sheep. 60 years ago, no country, no army. They have no country, 
no army. Seven Arab nations declared war on the Jewish state. Only a few hours after Israel declared itself a nation. We were only 650,000 Jews against the many millions in the Arab world. There was no strong Israeli defence force. No powerful air force to save us, but only brave Jewish, show, Jew, Jewish people that believe in the promises of God. Same thing with us. And no else to go. Lebanon, Syria, Iraq, Jordan, Egypt, Libya, Saudi Arabia, all attacked at the same time. The country that United Nations gives us was 65% desert. 65% desert. The country that uh, they were given, United Nations gave them, Britain gave them, 65% deserts. 35 years ago, we fought three of the most powerful armies in the Middle East. We swept them away in six days. We fought against various coalition of Arab countries. We have modern armies and many Soviet weapons, and we have always beaten them. We have always beaten them. Today, he was celebrating the 70th. See, seven against seven. Now we are in the eight. We, have, we are a state, a country. We have an army. We have a powerful air force. We have a state-of-the-art economy. We export with billions of dollars. We have Intel, Microsoft, IBM, many high-tech companies developing cutting-edge products in Israel. Our doctors receive awards for medical research. We make the desert bloom. We sell orange. We sell flowers. We sell vegetables all over the world. This comes from the word of the Prime Minister of Egypt, uh, Israel. Israel has its own satellite that sent into space. Three satellites at the same time. We are proud to be the same rank as the United Nations, has 250 million people. Russia, there's 200 million people. China has 1.3 million people. France, Europe, um, France, Great Britain, Germany, 350 million people. The only country we can send three satellites up to space. That was only 60 years ago. We were led ashamed, hopeless to slaughter. We experienced the smoking ruins of Europe. We won our wars here in Israel with less than nothing. Less than nothing. We have built our little empire from nothing. Who is Hamas to scare me, to terrify me? You make me laugh. Passover is celebrated. Let's not forget. What Passover means, we survived Pharaoh, we survived the Greek, we survived the Roman, we survived the Inquisition in Spain, we survived the pogrom in Russia, we survived Hitler, we survived the German, we survived the Holocaust, we survived the armies of the seven Arab countries, we survived Saddam, we will survive the enemy's presence. Think of any time in human history, think about it for us, the Jewish people. The situation has never been better today. Let us remember, all nations that tried to destroy us, they no longer exist today. But we still live. Egypt, empire gone, Babylon gone, Greek gone, Alexandria gone, Macedonia gone, the Romans gone, the Third Reich all gone. Look at us. We were the slave of Egypt. We were the people of Moses. We were the nation of the Bible. We are still here. We are still here. And Israel, Hebrew is still the official language of the state of Israel today. From the time of the Bible until now, Arabs don't know yet, but they will learn that there is a God. As long as we keep our identity, we are forever. We are constantly getting better. Don't believe the media. They don't tell a lot of good things about us. But today, celebration continues to take place in Israel. People continue to leave. People continue to come out, in fact, of the threatens of the Hamas and the Hezbollah's bombing. People continue to see friends. You know what I say? The guardian of Israel never sleep or slumber. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Glory to the God of Israel. If God can fulfill those things that was promised, Israel experienced the whole totality of his promise in the span of 70 years. I think it is time the same fulfillment come to the church. Not just the church, individually, each and every one of you. It is time. It is time.
Don't just talk about, let's pray for the promises of God. No, it is time. You know, Daniel said, I'm finishing. Daniel said, he studies it. God, it is time. You know what, Daniel? He gave himself to prayer. He just pray. Every day you just pray. God, you say this. God, for Daniel said, God, forgive me of my sin. His first prayer was, God, forgive me of my sin. Maybe you should pray like that. God, forgive me of my sin. And the next moment, the angel came and said, Daniel, ta 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 God will tell you. God will tell you. Shall we pray?